P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's round up time on the double air bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rocha. Breakfast is no trouble these days, is it, buckaroos? And neither is a between-meal snack. Not when Mom keeps post cereals on the shelf. She knows, just as we do, that you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. You know, a very interesting couple staying at Dale's Hotel, Professor Douglas Manson and his wife. We don't know much about him, but the papers said he was a noted geologist doing some research across the border. How much longer do you think I'll put up with this, Douglas? We can't quit now, Grace. Wait, wait. All I do is wait. While you go traipsing across the border every morning, gone all day, don't get back till 5 o'clock, sometimes 6 or 7. Hold this pad between my shoulders. I'll strap it on. Doesn't my ingenuity appeal to you? A knowledge of geology and a pad of sponge rubber strapped between my shoulders and everyone, even the customs officials, think of me as a little hunchback professor traveling back and forth across the border, lending my knowledge to scholars of a foreign land. Smuggling was fun when we ran the stuff across the border at night. It's fun now, too. Every afternoon as I cross back to this side with my hump stuffed with contraband, the border guards treat me with the greatest courtesy. <laughs> And all the time I'm outwitting them. Well, there, I'm ready. I'll see you late this afternoon, Grace. The soft-spoken man twists his body a bit, puts a benign smile on his face, and leaves the Eureka Hotel, looking for all the world like the kindly little hunchback professor of geology he pretends to be. As he leaves... To disappear in the direction of the border, his wife seats herself, takes yarn from her ever-present shopping bag, and begins to knit. Late in the afternoon, the sun's rays cast the last shadows of a peaceful day over Mineral City's Main Street. Roy Rogers and Jonah Wilde have tied their horses to the hitching rail and are entering Dale's Hotel. Hi, uh, doggies, Roy. I thought of who old Tin Star reminds me of now. Howdy, Dale. Uh, who's that, Jonah? Well, Hi, Roy. Uh, Jonah? Hi. Uh, old Doc Quincy. Quincy the Quack. Well, I don't believe I ever met him. Well, he was a pretty good doc, Roy, until he wanted to buy some kind of a mysterious machine. He said mysterious machine claimed it was a camera that could take pictures inside a person. What's all this? Yeah. Oh, we're supposed to meet the sheriff here, Dale. Yeah, well, Dale, I was just telling Roy that old Tin Star acted as mysterious as Quincy the Quack done when he wanted that fake machine to take pictures inside of a person. Uh, he didn't call the machine an X-ray, did he? Uh, well, something like that. Well, anyway, he claimed he needed it to find out what was wrong with Barbara Kinney, and he tried to get the banker, Marion Connolly, uh, Clutching Connolly, say Clutching Connolly, oh. to lend him the money to buy it. Well, natural old Clutch and Connolly was too smart for that. But of course. Yeah, but the doc was determined. Yeah, he even offered to pay Clutchin's fare to the city and have a picture took inside of him. But old Clutchin just laughed and called the doc a quack. <laughs> oh, what about Barbara Kenny? Oh, well, he got a sensible doc for her, but she died anyway. <laughs> she died. And so did Clutchin. Died of bad headaches. When it was all over, Doc Quincy said that Clutchin could have been saved if he'd have had a picture took inside of his head. Because they'd have found out their tumor and operated. And he tried... Roy, down the street. Come on, it's the sheriff. The man with him has been hit. Well, what is it, Sheriff? What's the matter? Somebody got this man as I was taking him to the hotel. Dale, will you help look after him? Jonah? We'll see if we can find the gun. You stay here, Roy. I need you. Besides, I don't know who did the shooting. Let's see how badly he's hurt. Well, I sure got to hand it to you, Tin Star. Tain't everybody can pull a fella around in front of him between the time a gun is fired and a bullet hits. Arthur, for your information, this man runs a store in Squaw Creek. 
I picked him up because I found him dealing in smuggled goods. But he was ready to talk. That sounds bad. We mm-hmm. were on our way to see you, Roy. I thought if he gave you the information on the gang he was dealing with, you could work undercover until the federal men got here. Well, I reckon that's out now. We're evidently being watched. Well, he'll have to have attention right away. I was watching across the street, Dale. I saw the shooting. Is he dead? Just badly hurt, Mrs. Manson. Oh. Uh, you'll have to excuse us, Mrs. Manson. We've got to get this man over to the hotel where he can be taken care of. Well, I'll go right along with you. Maybe I can sort of keep watch over things and help some. Okay, if you want to. But, uh, Sheriff, if you and Jonah will help, we'll carry him to the lobby. Dale, you go ahead and hold the doors open. Mm-hmm. You bet, Doc. We'll follow your advice to the letter. Well, that certainly fixes things for us. Oh, I don't think the doc meant these fellas too sick to talk at all. Sheriff, did this fellow give you any inkling at all about the smuggling operations? No. I found him with the contraband in the store and arrested him. That's when I sent word for you to meet me here at the hotel. Hmm. Dale, you've got a lot of work to do. Now, I'll attend to this. It looks to me like the shot came from about Bill Palmer's place. A man stationed up on that roof with a rifle. Now, you know there's really no use in all of us staying here. I haven't a thing to do. i just gladly take care of the wounded man. We'll take turns, Mrs. Manson. Well, of course, Dale. Now, I'll watch over him the first few hours and... Uh, you... The sheriff or a deputy will have to be here, too. This man is a prisoner. Oh. I think we'll all stay for a while. If he comes to and talks, we can save time by hearing what he says. Well, Dale, or I could tell you. We appreciate your offer, though, Mrs. Manson. <laughs> well, I'm just glad to help. <laughs> Well, as long as you don't need me right away, I'll run upstairs and see if Professor Manson's home so he'll know where I am. Sure, you go right ahead and take your time. We may be here for quite a while. Jonah and the sheriff give their attention to the wounded man. Roy and Dale watch Mrs. Manson as she leaves the room. Her short, somewhat untidy figure moves slowly through the door and straight ahead along the corridor, then turns the corner. Roy and Dale glance at each other questioningly, as though wondering whether the woman is nosy or merely neighborly. They bend over the wounded man once more. But what of Mrs. Manson? Once safely around the corner, she drops all pretense of being unhurried. She races toward the stairs. She enters her room. Professor Manson is there. She gives him the details of what has happened. He becomes agitated, alarmed. And I brought a load back. Reach into my hump. Take it. We'll have to get rid of it quick. All right. But I ought to be down there with them. Norris was ready to talk even before he was wounded. He may talk, all right. If he does, they'll they'll come up here and we want to be clean. They can't hold us unless they find evidence on us. No, Besides, that Bill Palmer ought to be warned. You can do that when you take the stuff up. Well, don't stand there. Get the stuff out of my hump. Come on, Grace, come on. I'm doing the best I can, Douglas. Mrs. Manson pulls a tissue paper covered packet from the false hump on her husband's back. She puts it at the bottom of her knitting bag, hangs the bag over her arm, and leaves the room. A moment later, her dumpy figure may be seen strolling across Mineral City's main street toward Bill Palmer's place, a known hangout for criminals. Well, somebody ought to tell Mrs. Manson to keep out of Bill Palmer's. It's no place for a woman. She sells her knitting to somebody over there, Roy. Uh, Roy, I think I'll run over to the office, find out if there's any word from the federal man. Okay, Sheriff. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh. How do you, Professor? How do you do, Sheriff? My wife told me... Nothing about... to get excited about. Roy, I want to help. Smugglers are traitors to their country as much as... Uh... I appreciate your offer, Professor. His pulse is stronger. He may regain consciousness for a few minutes. Then, uh... He hasn't confessed? No, not yet. Well, I hope he does. Anyone so lacking in appreciation for their country... Quiet, Professor. ...ought to serve the maximum term. Or better still be forced to live in a foreign land. Professor, just a minute. If this man regains... I know what foreign countries are compared to Man's... the United States. They just Roy, are... his lips are moving. I cross the border every day, but at night I make sure that Why I'm can't you back. be quiet, Professor? I just don't like to stay there. You're going to make us miss what our prisoner says. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Roy. I'm dreadfully sorry. Just wave the flag. Don't blow on it. He said Palmer. Bill Palmer. 
Convolutions. I was right then. Come on, Jonah. We're going over. Uh, wait. Uh, please, Roy. What? Uh, Mrs. Manson. She's at Palmer's place. If, if you go now, there may be shooting. She'll be in danger. Uh, give me time to get her out. All right. Go ahead. We'll give you exactly five minutes, but no more. In five minutes, we're taking that place apart. You and Jonah can go now, Roy. I got this extra blanket to keep the... <laughs> Three shots ring out. Dale screams, drops to the floor. There in the doorway are two men. Guns smoking it pointed at the wounded man on the bed. Roy springs at them. Jonah, come on. They're after the prisoner. By now, I'm sure you Roy Rogers fans know our little sugar crisp jingle by heart. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. But have you tried it all those ways yet? If not, you're missing out on some real fun eating. You bet. It's wonderful to start your day off with post-sugar crisp. Just pour it out into big breakfast bowls and add milk or cream. You don't need any sugar. It's just sweet enough. Mmm, that wonderful sugar and honey-coated puffed wheat makes such a delicious cereal. But breakfast time isn't the only time folks enjoy post-sugar crisp. It was just made for between-meal snacks or just before bedtime. And wherever you are, at work or at play, it's lots of fun to reach right into the Post Sugar Crisp package and eat it like candy. Yes, Post Sugar Crisp is fun to eat all day long. Try it all those ways soon. Get Post Sugar Crisp in the famous red, white, and blue post package with the three little bears on the front. Roy springs at the two gunmen who've entered the room to kill the captured smuggler. His fist crashes against the nose of one of them. Another blow to the side of his head throws him off balance. Roy hits him again. He goes down. Jonah is swinging at the second back. Jonah is hit. He crumples and falls. The man raises his gun. Roy swings, and the fight is over. You all right, Dale? Jonah? Yeah, uh, Roy. Oh, yes, I feel good, Roy. For a fellow who just took on Samson, Joe Lewis, and a fine-cut buzzsaw. Where'd they come from? They followed you into the room when you came back with a blanket for our prisoner. They didn't want any confession made, I guess. Hey, look at the holes in that pillow. Wow! Another inch and they'd have got our prisoner. Get up. Come on, hustle, both of you. Yeah, he sprawled on the floor. And one thing Dorothy May likes about me is my dignity. When do you hombres want to tell us who sent you here? Before we lock you up or later? Yeah. Looks like we'll have to wait till later, Roy. Okay, get moving. You stay with Dale, Jonah. I'll have a deputy here to help guard as soon as I can. <laughs> we'll be all right, Roy. You two be careful going through this door and down the stairs. One false move and we'll... Oh, dear. What? What? Look out, Manson. Keep him away. The two gunmen opposing the door run into Professor and Mrs. Manson who are entering. Mrs. Manson accidentally or deliberately turns an ankle and falls. Professor Manson bends over her and is between the two gunmen and Roy. The gunmen see a chance to escape. They run along the corridor. For heaven's sake, my wife! Don't endanger my wife! Stop! Hold it! Get him, Roy! Get him! As Roy fires, the two gunmen leap through the window at the end of the corridor and are gone. Roy and Jonah run toward the window. There, down the main street, on horseback. Don't shoot, Jonah. There are others on the street. Hey, how them pole cats get horses so fast? Well, I don't know unless somebody brought them up and had them ready waiting below the window. Hey, Roy, who do shit you think? Oh, my ankle. It hurts. I'm not sure, Jonah. I'm sure it's nothing serious, Mrs. Manson. We'll get the sheriff and see that our one prisoner is guarded. And we'll find Bullet and put him on the trail of those two hombres. The quicker they're caught, the better. That's it, Bullet. Keep on their trail. They're sure not losing any time, are they? Oh, that dirt, empty-headed, flippity it, turning her ankle over. We'll get him, Jonah. Don't worry. Here. Oh, he's lost the trail, it seems. Yeah, them pole cats stopped for some reason. See the tracks? They stopped all right. Then they headed across the rocks. Come on, Bullet. Find the trail. What is it, fella? Something's wrong with him. Yeah, well, I'll bet you I know what happened. 
Them moss-backed chuckleheads stopped here and tied some bags of red pepper to the horse's hocks. Well, you may be right, Jonah. Oh, gee, I hope not. Well, bullets lost the trail, and they shouldn't have in a country like this. Yeah. Red pepper tied in a cloth bag to a horse's hocks will do it. Just enough pepper leaks through the cloth when the horse is running to confuse things. The sheriff's prisoner was wounded, and he was ready to confess, and somebody knew he was. Because two trigger men came into the hotel to kill him. We took them, and they escaped. Because horses were outside waiting for them. Yeah. Yeah, and because Mrs. Fliberty Gibbet twisted her ankle bone. Mrs. Manson was around quite a bit during all that happened. As long as we've lost the trail, let's go back to town and see what we can find out about her. They're fine people, Roy, both Professor Manson and his wife. He's a geologist. Doing work for the folks across the border. Who says so? And Mrs. Manson works hard herself at her knitting. Probably to help out because the professor doesn't make much money. Yeah, I've noticed she seems to have that knitting bag with her most of the time. I wonder where they are now, up in the room? Probably. Let's go see them. There's a few questions on the subject of geology I'd like to ask the professor. We may not have another chance to leave, Douglas. They're closing in on us. I'm sure they are. If we leave now, they'll suspect us sure. The best thing we can do is to follow our regular routine for a while until this blows over. I don't feel easy. Anytime I... things look dangerous, all you have to do is send a wire to the the scholars. Sure, sure, that's all right for you, but what about me? Listen. I'll go. My hump all right? Yeah. Everything will be fine. Let me handle it. Oh, how do you do? Uh, we called to find out how Mrs. Manson is. Me? Oh, oh, my ankle. <laughs> oh, yes, it's much, much better. Thank Won't you. Won't you come in? Oh, thanks. We'd like to. That is, if we're not disturbing <laughs> you. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, did you capture the gunman? Uh, practically, but it's the last minute to get away. Oh, what a shame. Well, sit down, won't you? I understand you're doing some very interesting work, Professor. Why, yes, yes, it is. What is it you're studying exactly? Well, it's rather technical. We're concerning ourselves chiefly with the Paleozoic era. The Silurian formations as contrasted with the Ordovician, particularly the Nagarian. Well, now, ain't that a situation? Uh, we believe we've definitely established that Silurian fauna, particularly the Brachypods, were larger than the Ordovician. That'll change after the election. Well, that is interesting. Uh, Professor, I, uh, well, I've made sort of a hobby of geology myself. I wondered if you'd mind if Joan and I rode down with you. Uh, today? Yes, Dale can stay here to keep Mrs. Manson company. Why, uh... We'll, well be careful not to get in your way. Well, I guess it'll be all right. Well, fine. Let's leave now, shall we? Well, you go ahead, Douglas. I'll just take it easy. About all I have to do today is send a telegram. Everything will be all right. <laughs> The dumpy little woman, accompanied by Dale, leaves the room to send an all-important telegram and then spend the next few hours in apparent leisure. During those same few hours, Roy and Jonah ride toward the border with Professor Manson. Their progress is slow, very slow, perhaps because the professor wishes to make sure his wife's telegram has time to arrive at its destination. The building straight ahead is the one we want. We'll leave the horses here uh, and the dog, too. All right, sure. Evidently, your scholar friends got here ahead of us. I see their horses tied behind the shack. Why, yes, uh, they live here. Well, <clears throat> suppose we ground hitch our horses. Uh, the dog should be tied, though. Don't worry about Bullet. He'll stay wherever I tell him. I'm afraid my companions may be uneasy with the dog around. Your companions in the shack, you mean? The companions are indeed in the shack. Men who appear to be anything but scholars. Their leader looks through the dirty windows out toward Roy, Jonah, and the professor. Yeah, they're here. Two hombres beside the professor. I guess the telegram Grace sent meant we was to take them. She said today is Douglas's birthday. Help him celebrate. Wait a minute. One of them's Roy Rogers. Yeah, now we know she meant we was to take them. Every gun's ready, boys, and don't fool. <laughs> I'll show you our specimens when we get inside the shack. 
They're very For just a minute. I'd like to see this building here first. This? Why, this is just a shelter for horses in bad weather. I know. Move on inside, Professor. Uh, but, uh, Go ahead. I... Well, of course, but I don't see what is interesting about... Uh... That's good, right there. Professor, your friends in the shack aren't scholars. Why, why, of course they are. No, they're not. I recognize their horses. And the horses are tied in front of Bill Palmer's place in Mineral City several times a week. You're mistaken, sir. The horses belong to gunmen, Al Hoots. Manson, the jig's up. They're part of a smuggling ring, and so are you. No, why, that's ridiculous. You let us down here to be killed. But we're going to take them. Take them and you, with your help. I want you to change your clothes with me. Change clothes? So I can get into the shack without being killed. We want to take him with as little shooting as possible. No, you can't take my clothes. I won't let Grab you. Grab him, Jonah. Yeah. yeah. I got him. Yeah. Whoop. Your shirt tore. Uh, hold still now. Yeah, your shirt did tear. And what's this underneath? Why, well, some newfangled kind of a... What You're not it? a hunchback after all, are you, Mr. Manson? This is a sponge rubber. Hollow. And used to carry contraband back and forth. Let me alone. Let me alone, I say. Stand quiet. We won't change clothes. You go into the door of the shack and ask your friends to come outside. Do it without giving any signals, too, Manson. Because we'll have our guns trained on you every second of the time. If you're a chief rain in the face in the morning... Get off the warpath with a breakfast built around new, improved Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes. Post Toasties are crisp, fresh, packed with the rich, sweet kernel flavor of corn. The cereal, it's a hit with both big Indians and little Indians. Post Toasties, heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. So put a feather in your cap, Mom, by making sure your early morning hunters find a heap of post toasties in their breakfast bowls. Talk about corn flavored freshness that'll make them whoop for more. Say, you're talking about post toasties. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Boys, come outside a minute, will you? What for? I want you to see something. Everything's all right. There's nothing to worry about. Okay. Oh, we got a telegram from your wife, Manson. She said we was to help you celebrate. Before Al Hoots begin filing from the shack, Roy and Jonah wait tensely until the last man clears the door so none will be left inside. As the last man comes into the open, the leader whips his gun from his holster. Instantly, Roy's gun speaks. The gun flies from the outlaw's hand. Roy lunges toward the group. Jonah follows. Bullet, come on, boy. Here, fella. The great dog leaps toward them. And in an instant, the battle is in full progress. Roy, Jonah, and Bullet against four outlaws, and the man who calls himself Professor. Bullet singles out a gunman, pulls him to the ground. One man goes down under Roy's blows. Jonah has knocked a man to his knees. Roy takes another. Only one man is left, Bill Palmer. Roy, recognizing him, even as he drives a blow to the outlaw's stomach, Palmer staggers, his body slumps, he falls forward. On guard, Bullet. Watch him, fella. Uh, now look who's undignified. We'll march him to the nearest town, Jonah. Get as much of a confession as we can, then lock him up until we can make arrangements to take him across the border to our side. You really cleaned up that bunch, Roy. And no thanks to me. Boy, how could I ever have been so stupid as to let Mrs. Manson send that telegram? It was a perfectly innocent telegram, Dale, at least outwardly. And we had no real reason to suspect the Mansons were involved in the smuggling ring. And anyway, it all came out all right. Sure, as long as I have Joan and Bullet, I, I can get along. You bet your eyes. He just... Ra- Ooh, now, wait a minute here. You're putting me in the same class with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank the man, Jonah. <laughs> now, uh, now, listen, you tin-starred back. You just got whoa, that... Whoa, whoa, here. Hold it a minute. Well... Jonah, you've done such a big day's work... Uh, 
Why don't you enjoy yourself for a while? Uh, go over and see Dorothy May. <laughs> Why, sure. You said you hadn't called on her for a whole week. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, well, I, I can't tonight. No, unless you... Well, well I hate to ask you this. It, it ain't it ain't exactly the first of the month yet, Roy. Uh, how much do you need, Jonah? Well, it's kind of hard to tell. See, the last time I was there, she had my book typed as far as I'd read it. Mm-hmm. I say as far as I'd read it. Mm-hmm. So she said, why don't we just have supper here instead of going out? And then uh, afterwards, we could sit and listen to the radio for Ooh, a while. Sure. Radio? I thought you said she didn't have a radio. She has now. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, we, we was going to sit and listen to it while she knit me a pair of socks. Well, of course, I thought that'd be fine. <laughs> supper wouldn't cost me nothing that way. And then she found out that she didn't have no soda. And she wanted she wanted to make me some soda biscuits, so we had to go to the store for some. Uh-huh. I can see what's coming. Yes. Well, the upshot of the whole business was that we had to hire a horse and buggy from the livery stable to get home with the soda and uh, <coughs> the other little things that Dorothy May had to run out of. Oh, boy, are you being taken. Uh-huh. But I don't realize it until later. She looks at you, you know, from out from under them long lashes, and she gives me that <laughs> fetch me a sandwich smile, and it just <laughs> uh, oh, sure. Well, to tell the truth, I just don't know nothing till day after tomorrow. <laughs> Jonah, I'll advance you five dollars and no more, and uh, maybe the day after tomorrow you'll thank me for not giving you any more. <laughs> Just a prairie canary with a heart that's warm as toast. But somehow I don't want to marry. Guess I love the range the most. T for Texas, that's the place for me. Plains are rolling far as the eye can see. Now the maker of the trees will paint my face and the wind will comb my hair. And my little pony takes me any place, so I haven't a single care. T for Texas, that's the place for me. meet a man and he holds your hand, says he loved you all your life. Yes, he means it then, but he forgets it when that preacher makes a man and wife. T for Texas, that's the place for me. Plains are rolling far as the eye can see. If you want to know all about my life, I'm descended from David Crockett. And I cut my teeth on a bowie knife with a forty-five in my pocket. T for Texas, that's the place for me. I'm a riding a range all day. And if I droop, I eat cactus soup, then I'm up and I'm on my way. T for Texas, that's the place for me. Plains are rolling far as the eye can see. Now look here, friend, I'm a Texas hen. And when we make a date, to dance and stuff, you better not show up a dollar short and an hour late. T for Texas, that's the place for me. Plains are To get myself a break But they told me out there my talk was corny And that I just couldn't take T for Texas, that's the place for me Plains are rolling far as the eye can see T-E-X-A-S T for Texas, that's the place for me That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on till then Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. 
Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Stan Waxman, Vivi Janis, and Leo Curley. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling About the clouds if we're together. Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails.